having a special guest with me. This young lady I had the pleasure of meeting at the XFL Tampa Bay Vipers. She was a beat writer for them. Now she is a Steelers Wire contributor, Allison Kohler. Allison, haven't talked to you in a minute. How you been? What's going on? I am good. I'm good. Thanks for reaching out and thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Hey, you know what? Anytime, anytime. So I got to ask you because the draft just happened. And as we were talking about, thank God we had sports this weekend because it's been it's been crazy. Right. More importantly, how are you holding up in Pittsburgh with the pandemic and everything? How's everything going? Family's good. You're good. Yeah, everybody's good. We're all good. We're we're just going to grocery stores and that's pretty much only when we have to. So uh, otherwise, we're pretty much just, you know, kind of hanging out at the house. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so so let me ask you about your draft, your Steelers draft. Now, I mean, I'm looking at some of these guys here, and it just seemed to me like there was a mix mm-hmm. of what the substance was going to be for this year's draft. I mean, first, you didn't have a first-round pick, mm-hmm. but you did get Chase Claypool from Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. You wound up in the third round. That was in the second round. Third round, you got Alex Highsmith, edge rusher mm-hmm. from Charlotte, mm-hmm. Anthony McFarlane. Uh, any relation to Booker McFarlane? No, I, that no. was my first question. I googled it right away. I was like, Anthony McFarlane Jr. Like of all yeah. of all names, like, right? He has to be, but he's not really. Okay, another running back, uh, like I said, from Maryland, Kevin Dotson, mm-hmm. Antoine Brooks Jr., and then Carlos Davis. So, you know, in your opinion, overall grade uh, for your team mm-hmm. and moving forward. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I'm kind of on the on the fence with like a a B minus C. Okay. Uh, I hope that that changes. That's what's kind of cool. Like, obviously, you give a grade now based on essentially nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just your overall kind of gut looking at it all, you know. But it, what's most fun is is in a couple seasons, you know, kind of regrading the draft class. Hopefully, you know, it, it turns out to be more of an A. Yes. Obviously, you know, that's what you always hope for. But, um you know, I sort of feel like uh, a lot of a lot of fans wanted um, wanted them to wanted the Steelers to draft a running back, like kind of a feature back, you know, with their first selection in the in the second round. And J.K. Dobbins was there, and from Ohio State, you know, and he, he you know, he's a he's definitely has a feature back, kind of a three down back kind of guy. And I know that that's essential in the past. That's what the Steelers have wanted, like Mike Tomlin even though all of these teams or the majority of the NFL are kind of rotating backs, right. you know, there's only really a handful of teams that still use a feature back. The Steelers were still doing that even with Connor being injury prone, you know, I mean, obviously last season they had to rotate backs because Connor got injured, but they've really been a feature back kind of team. Now you kind of look at it, you know, with, with the selection of McFarland and, and passing on a feature back like Dobbins. Um, you kind of have to wonder if maybe they're actually going to go to like a running back by committee um, type of type of game plan for the running backs, because um, you know, I think, I think Tomlin wised up and and figured that the best way to use Connor is sparingly. Gotcha. You know, even though you're limiting him, you're still getting the best out of him by limiting, you know, his touches. So yeah. And I really think that when you say running back by committee in the past, that's always been the case of a featured back. And a lot of people have said, Hey, if you have three, four running backs, you actually have zero. But what Mm -hmm. we're seeing is, and I'll go back to when, you know, out Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara were together Mm -hmm. and you had those type of one, two punches. Mm -hmm. That's what made, you know, the Steelers and, and, and other, well, not the Steelers, but that's what made the saints, that good. I mean, I'll, I'll refer to my Philadelphia Eagles. The year that we won, we were yeah. running out Jay Ajayi and LeGarrette Blunt, mm-hmm. And we were able to, you know, get the best out of them. And it was really substance over style. So mm-hmm. were there any surprises to you with this draft class as far as who Pittsburgh took? Anybody who you thought they might have been reaching for? Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of people, um, you know, have, have noted after the draft that McFarland was a bit of a reach. But, but actually, back in the summer, some pundits were saying that, you know, he was – and, again, it was the summer, so it was still pretty early in terms of, you know, kind of predicting how the draft was going to go. But a lot of pundits were saying that he was end of first round, kind of second round guy. So um, – but I think that his, his stock kind of, kind of fell, you know, as, as the draft got closer because even though he had a really great 2018 – he 
he had a high ankle sprain that kind of limited him in 2019. So actually at the combine, he still ran, I think like a four, four forty, even though he was still kind of, you know, the high ankle sprains, you know, how they go, you know, the, yep. they, they linger. So he was still kind of nursing that injury and he was still able to, you know, to do pretty fairly well, you know, at the combine. So I think that that, that helped him. And, and there's a lot of he McFarland has a lot of connections to the Steelers coaches because um, their new quarterbacks coach was the offensive coordinator at Maryland. Oh, nice! While, while McFarland was there, so so he knows him, and also Mike Tomlin's son played at Maryland last season, so they played together last season. So there's some connection there that I that I think definitely you know helped his draft stock in terms of the Steelers selecting him. Yeah. And I was just looking up. I did while well, you said that I was looking up. Yeah. A four, 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 40. I mean, mm-hmm. his vertical jump was 29 and a half, but mm-hmm. his broad jump 11 and a half. I mean, right. wow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Mm-hmm. really quick. And thank you again for joining me, Allison mm-hmm. Kohler, Steelers wire contributor up there in Pittsburgh, you know, looking at this and in years past, the Pittsburgh Steelers have pretty much owned the division of the mm-hmm. AFC North. It seems as though other teams, a la Baltimore, and even in some regards, Cleveland, Mm -hmm. are starting to kind of bid for that title. Mm -hmm. Do you think this draft class is going to be able to get Pittsburgh back atop the mountain of being the NFC North champion? Well, I don't think the draft per se is going to help them. Uh, you know, it really all, all the pressure now lies on Ben Roethlisberger in terms of, you know, what it's going to be like when he comes back. You know, he says he's ready. He's saying, oh, this is great that I have some extra time to, you know, to, to rehab and things like that. But if he can come back even at 80%, because even last season, you know, they changed the draft format for this season, you know, or the, the playoff format rather. So, if the playoff format that they're going with this season going forward had, had been last year, they actually would have made the playoffs. And I, I know it's a lot of hypothetical situations, but being in how awful they were last season, especially definitely offensively, you know, um, having just having Ben Roethlisberger back at even 80%, I think will help them, will help them tremendously. And I know that they did get some, um, They helped, uh, they got a new, they drafted another guard. You know, there's going to be some competition there at training camp or however they have that this year. So definitely, you know, protection for Ben and Chase Claypool, you know, he is going to be, he will be amazing. I I have a feeling and he's going to be able to help Juju Smith-Schuster go back into his natural position when, when uh, Antonio Brown was there. So hopefully, you know, the fact that they have Claypool and, if Ben is back at 80%, I, I really do think that they have a that they have a shot at making the playoffs this year. Like you said, with the expanded uh, mm-hmm. playoffs that they're going to now, letting seven teams in, uh, mm-hmm. the crazy thing is if, if they've had that for, you know, several past years, Pittsburgh mm-hmm. would have been one of the few teams for over a decade always mm-hmm. getting into the postseason. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, yeah. that's not the case. So let's right. see what happens moving forward. Allison, thank mm-hmm. you so much for being on. Hey, please stay safe. Yes, Anytime you, you want to jump on the sports arena, you give right. me a holler. Let's definitely okay. uh, keep this thing going throughout the season. Sounds good. I'll talk to you soon. I appreciate right. you. Thank you. Thanks. Here.